News Talk Radio 610 WIOD presents the best of Neil Rogers. Neil's on vacation this week, so don't call in. If you do decide to call in, we're going to make a list of your names so Neil can rip you on the air when he gets back. The opinions expressed by the guest hosts or callers are not necessarily those of this station. Now, here's the best of Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. It's late at night, you're fast asleep, and a shadowy figure is about to break into your home. But you're protected. Ow! 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 Yes, it's the James Brown Home Security Alarm. Ow! Ow! The hardest working alarm in the safety business. Ow! 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 Designed by the godfather of home protection himself. Ow! The James Brown Alarm protects you from burglars, vandals, peeping tar. And if you act now, we'll include at no extra cost the patented James Brown Hot Pants Fire Alarm. Ow, 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 ow. So put the Soul Patrol on your keyhole ow. with the James Brown Home Security System. Ow, yeah. You'll say, I feel good. Fort Lauderdale. Hey, I just got that on 610 WIOD Insider. Thanks. Yeah. I feel pretty honored to get that. Yes, man. sir. You and only 50 million other people got one, pal. Oh, really? And the, re and the reason we can't afford these cart racks we were going to put up on the walls in here like a real radio station is because we spent thousands of dollars to send that crap out. How, how, how long ago did you guys print this up? What do, you mean you, what do you mean you guys? Or your company or whatever. Probably just before they uh, stuck me on there at 930, I guess. Yeah, fairly recently then, huh? Yeah. Man, I'll tell you, you got a lot of ugly people working at your station. Well, that's why we're on radio. Like Meg Green. However, have you seen the people at Channel 7 and they're on television? They're so what's, pretty ugly. So what's, so what's their excuse? Yeah, really. They shouldn't even be on. And it's got a little schedule. It shows you with the father back here and, and Mark Phillips and brother Harry. Brother yeah. Harry uh -huh. from Camilla's house. Right. And mm. Chris Rollins looks like an axe murderer. He is. And it, then I, I just filled out the card. Don't ever, don't ever let him him have one of those sickles out in the field, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's not going out to cut weeds. I guarantee you that. He may and be I'm, growing a few, but I could ask you something. If Rick Riley gets such good-looking girlfriends, I don't see how. I he's not the greatest-looking guy in the world, is he? To say the best, he's one of the schmutziest. <laughs> but there's always something there that doesn't meet the eye. You know what I'm he saying? He must be paying them big bucks. No, nah, there must be something that we can't see with the naked eye. That's the only thing yeah, I can see. There's got to be something. He's like maybe yeah. hip hypnotizing him or something. Ask a Judge Thomas. I think he may have the inside story on that. What's the story with Mitch, L <laughs> Mitch Lewis's ponytail? Jesus. He should put some of that on the front of his head. Is, oh, he is in that thing, isn't he? Yeah, he's in the very back he of the snapshot. Uh, he looks like Goldilocks in drag is what he looks like. Right he next just, to uh, your, uh, I'm sure your close acquaintance with Dolphin Cheerleaders, right next to that snapshot. Right. And Bob Soper and Mike Ranieri. Yeah. Mike you know, Ranieri. You know, you know the close match between Mike Ranieri and um, uh, Pat Murray's hair. <laughs> well, I, I filled out the card, and, I, and for the features I'd like to see in the next issue, I put um, nude pictorial of Neil Rogers. Right. Uh, that's that's what I'd like to see next time. Coming to a mailbox near you. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye. Exciting calls here coming in from like all over the place. Was that from Hialeah? You damn it! Yeah. Where El Presidente came and pandered. Oh, I'm going to be the first president in office in the days after Castro. Blah, 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 blah. See, 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 see. See this? See this, Jorge? It's the election results, man, and you lose big time. Even that fascist Nazi pig is getting like 35, 37% of the vote, including 30% in some states where he never even, uh, they never heard of him before. Just because they hate you like poison and your Neanderthal elitist uh, crappy out-of-touch attitudes. And then I love, you know, we keep hearing, like, even uh, one of the airlines, I won't mention because they'll get all psychotic, was this morning saying about how they're having to reevaluate uh, ways of trying to cut back because it's like the absolute worst and the airline industry is in the biggest trouble ever. And General Motors is announcing all these new cutbacks and layoffs and closing of plants and all this other. And uh, what's his name? Uh, Greenstein, Greenberg, uh, Greenhouse uh, comes on yesterday. Oh, the recession's over. Yeah, right. It's like, make me a malted. Poof, you're a malted. Right. Greenspan. Alan Greenspan. Span this, you lying asshole, you sack of crap. Who are you kidding? See, they, they really believe that even the public in this country ain't that stupid, okay? They bought it for like about two years until they had no more money and they're starving to death. Now you can put some geek on there. Oh, the recession's over. It's uh, sideways. Yes, yeah, stick this sideways, you idiot. God.
Who the hell are they think they're yanking? Coral Springs. Neil. Yeah. Did you listen to the last newscast? Did I what? Listen to the last newscast. About the viruses? Yeah, no, it's a condom. Did you catch it? They said this is the... Uh, AIDS of, uh, yeah. Right, and they use a condom as a thing there. They can't. And what it, the what? hell? What does that mean? You stick a condom over your computer? That's what they're making it sound like, yeah. Yeah. They put sex in anything they can fix. Exactly. It. Well, you've seen those little uh, things they got, those little uh, uh, joysticks. Hey, Neil. Yeah. You said earlier, you can't... Put be... a condom over your joystick for the weekend, folks. Yes, hey, go ahead. Hey, Neil, don't be putting your your your, uh, your situation is the same as Pee Wee's situation. Those are two different things. I didn't say it was, but it's not the point. The point is that the guy wasn't going to go through a whole yeah, long song Yeah, but dance. he had a lot to jeopardize. You have nothing to jeopardize by going to court. What? You have the money... You, 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 you want to you put up the money? You want to oh, go through on, it? Neil, go much blow is... it out your fat butt, okay, you asshole? I have nothing to lose but thousands and thousands of dollars for what? And then wind up with the same damn thing with some judge who sits there and says, okay, well, you do a uh, community service because that's what it always winds up anyway. You slime ball, you jackass, you idiot. Put a condom over your brain if you can find it, you asshole. Delray Beach. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Hey, yeah, that guy's crazy, man. 24 hours of service throughout the charges, Norm did a great job for you. No, wait a minute. Norm did not do a great job for me. The state attorney's office, Norm did a good job. You know, Norm always does a good job. Listen, you got to understand, this isn't something we went in and said, oh, well, this is what we got to have. It was like amicable on both sides because it's a pile of crap and they know that. So they said, We're, we don't want to make a big deal out of this. It's an incident. It's a, a pathetic, uh, tragic thing. And so it was, like, agreeable on all sides. It wasn't like there was countless hours of negotiation on this. It, everybody is just pleased to, like, wash it away. And then on Monday, I'm going to sit here and tell exactly what happened, not only in my case, but in a lot of other cases and what's been going on over there. And uh, Norm is supplying some material over there, and they're going to start looking into it. It needs to, it needs to stop. Sure does. Well, but for, but for some arrogant ass to be sitting on a phone somewhere anonymously out there in Radio Land to be telling me what the hell to do and how to throw away my money... If he's got all the extra money, why don't he put it up, okay? We'll do something useful with it. Right. And another thing. Like if, go to the track. If somehow, some way, you, did, you were found guilty, boy, you, you know, that's like a year, so you're in jail. and. Uh, no, it's not. It's not? No. Uh, oh, the reason why I called, though, was uh, I, I missed your last week's show because I've been going down and uh, watched the Manuel Noriega trial in uh, Miami. Yeah. Let me tell you. I, I you know, you speak about... I can hear him under his breath saying, communistas, communistas, about the U.S., the way, the way he's being treated there. Yeah. Man, the, the guy's like, I don't know, if you read the article on 10A in the Sun Sentinel? No. Well, it's, I don't read any depressing news. It's not depressing. Actually, what it is, it's saying that uh, the CIA is saying that the guy is innocent. Basically, is what they're saying. The guy didn't do what, what, the, what, what the government is trying to say he did. Our yeah. government is saying, no, he didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's, it's a good show, though. If anybody ever gets a chance to go down there, just don't bring any cameras. And bring no, a lot of Oxy-5. No, no, no radios and no yeah. guns. And a lot of Oxy-5. <laughs> now, he, he don't look too bad now. I guess that uh, his diet over here is pretty good because he's kind of clearing up. Yeah, he's, cl he's cleaning up his act. And his daughters have got two good-looking daughters, too. Okay. That's another point. <laughs> another good reason to go. Now we know why you're watching it. Okay. Yeah. Have a great life. Oh, you can't see it at the track. Okay. It's the best of Rogers. And this is News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Neil's on vacation this week. So while he's away, we're broadcasting the best of Neil. Highlights of previously broadcast programs. Now back to Neil on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD.
Uh, Wilton Manners, hello. Neil. Yeah. Hi there, how are you? Okay. Great, listen, I want you to know that I had seen, what you call their Fatso? Yeah. A uh, super movie. It is a great movie. Awesome, dude, totally. Yes. <laughs> and, I would, and I would also like to say, Neil. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> he ate the Oni. Huh? He ate the Oni. Right. <laughs> and the cake, yeah, and the ice cream cake. Yes. Listen, I would also like to say you had a phone call earlier, and that guy was a super, a super there douchebag saying to you that you should go spend thousands of dollars. Yeah. I would like to say I think you were 500% right. Well, look, look, what, what is the best that could happen if you go to court, if the thing is tossed out, you're not guilty, it's a bunch Absolutely. of crap. Absolutely. Well, it's the same as it is now. The charges are dropped, it's a, and, and the bottom line is the fact that I could pick and choose who I was going to do the 24 hours for over a, over a several-month period. I mean, I don't do any fundraisers for Camillo's House between the end of January and November, so right. here's a good excuse to kind of extend it around a year and something that I believe in. If, right, it was a, right. if it was a bunch of gratuitous crap that I don't care about, then I would say, well, yeah, that's just, you know, that's just a bunch of garbage. But because it's something I care about, so what's the big deal with it? And everything just disappears. I mean, right. would, you, would you rather spend thousands and thousands? I've already spent two grand for nothing. So oh would I rather God. spend 10 or 15 or 20 or 50 grand to make that guy happy? He can stuff it. Absolutely, absolutely. Listen, I uh, spoke to you a, a couple of weeks ago. I was a, a, what you call, a little bit there nervous. I had there told you I had my car fixed from a Advanced Automotive. Yeah. And they did a, a super job. Right. And I think you do one there, one there, one one there hell of a job talking about all these places. Yes, I sure do. And in fact, I, I do like such a good I do such a good job that our sales department should respect that and leave me the hell alone and stop bugging me and sticking Absolutely the food in here Neil. and just try to act a little bit professional, which is acting you know asking quite a lot from them. But it's about time they start appreciating it because otherwise half of these guys wouldn't have any billing on their thing. Absolutely. They like to turn Neil. it around like I'm getting rich because of them. I get paid basically the same regardless of what the hell they do back there, okay? Because I have a contract and it's nickels and dimes in terms of talent fee and all that. that. That's just like frosting on the cake, okay? So I do just fine without them. But the bottom line is that an enormous amount of their billing, which keeps them their goddamn job, comes because this show gets tremendous results for our advertisers. And Absolutely. it's about time they started appreciating that and showing it by leaving me the hell alone and staying out of my face and stop calling on the bat line and Absolutely. coming in. The studio and sending in a bunch of food when we don't want it, and Tom Denenberg, who thinks it's a big joke, should only <laughs> rot in hell. How do you like that? What Absolutely. a little twerpy asshole, okay? He thinks he's going to orchestrate my gastronomical life for the rest of my life, okay? Which is going to be pretty damn short if he has anything to say about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Neil, Neil I would like, you to, say that say, one more I would like time. to say one more thing. Yes. I don't, want to don't say absolutely. A, a, a to you. Okay. Say goodbye. All right, Neil. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. Okay. I'm serious, man. I went through that uh, verbal stroke on the air here yesterday, and it just, uh, there's no stopping these people, okay? And I hate to insult people who spend money on the air like Villa Deli because they got a great stuff and they're nice people and all this other. But when we have our salespeople who are such wimps that they don't have the confidence that we do a great job for our sponsors just by doing the commercials, which is all they're paying for. Nobody is paying for the right to keep coming in here and bringing all kinds of food for free mention. That's not part of the deal on this or any other radio station. It's unheard of. It just don't happen, okay? But Tom Denenberg is the one who created this little Frankenstein's monster because he's too much of a wimp to go in to say it. And, oh, no. Oh, no. We can't. In fact, a couple of the accounts that were the worst abusers of that, he turned over to Jim Can't Find the Remedy because Tom was too much of a wimp to go in there and say, cut the crap, okay? And that's really pretty pathetic, Tom, to be such a... It's bad enough to be short and a weasel, okay? You can't help that. But to be short and a weasel and a wimp, that's pretty sad, okay, Tom? But happy birthday to you. Tom gets the marquee. 17 years and six months in radio sales. Big marquee out there in front of WIOD and Channel 7. I got 16 years on the air in this godforsaken douchebag butt-sucking town. I don't get even like four letters on a marquee out there, okay, because most of it was at other radio stations. How do you like that? If it was 16 minutes at WIOD, it would have been on a marquee out there because they're, w because they're like self-centered around here, man. Like WIOD raised $350,000 for Camillo's house. They should live so long, okay? But anyway, have a nice day. Hi, this is Mitch Lewis, and uh, Johnny Dark is definitely, most certainly, in my opinion, a flaming, distended asshole. Okay. 
We should play the whole cart full of them, okay? That would kill some good time. In fact, between 9.30 and 10 in that half hour for the limited amount of time we got, we could just play like excerpts from that cart and kill a whole half hour every day. And everybody would be sitting out in the audience going, yeah, oh, look who's on the phone now. He said, hello. Yeah, oh, jeez. Hey, oh, boy. I hopped about four feet off this chair. Who's this? You'd have thought Tempest Storm just came out. Who's this? What? Who's this? Who the hell are you calling? That's Neil? Yeah, th that's who it is. No, you got to be kidding me. It's the butcher from Jersey. Yeah, I, I know. That's what I just said. Huh? Th what hey, is it? Neil, you want to do me a favor? Yeah, what anything for you, Butch. Uh, no, come on. No, don't stroke me. Like I'm on a I doubt it. I don't I hold want, your no, I, want, I want you to play that damn song. No, I'm we got to the whole day. The whole day with no requests. Wait, the whole no, damn no. day. And the Jersey hey, butcher hey, calls boy. up and ruins his whole image, hey, man. You are one of our favorite song. callers until play one. Just with that 95 song, the asshole driver, just wait when the stadium pulls me over the next time. I'm going to I'm gonna put it on my damn tape so you can hear it. Yeah. You know, that big guy, you call me an asshole, look at it. Yeah. All right, big guy, you do me a favor? Yeah. I'm only staying four days. Your wife? How's, how's it choking the chicken? You been doing good? See you, see you, butch. Huh? I said choke this. Choke this, I love you too. Okay. Neil, be good. Bye, Butchie. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Okay, it's just the abbreviated edition. Thank God that Roger put this together, even though it really sucks. I'm sorry. It's pretty weak. It's lame. It's uh, awful, Roger. It's terrible. But it's short, okay? It's real short. I mean, so short that you couldn't see it with uh, Mike Renieri's mag mag lenses. Well, I was driving down I-95 the other night. Reading lenses, glasses. Somebody nearly cut me right off the road. Exactly. I decided it wasn't going to do any good to get mad. I wrote a song about him instead. It goes like this. Were you born an asshole? Or did you work it your whole life? Either way, it worked out fine. Cause you're an ass. He's not just Hank Goldberg. He's a hippopotamus. Whole tonight. Loose, Dave, loose. loose. Although he didn't cart that up. Who carted that up? Oh, that was Roger, I think. Boy, that is as loose as a goose in a caboose, baby. The best of Rogers continues in minutes on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Tonight at 8, it's Goldberg at Night with Hank Goldberg. But right now, back to the best of Neil on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. <laughs> Reports from the BBC say four Cuban Air Force members were killed when two MiG-21 training planes collided southwest of Havana. Uh, Rebel Radio today carried a note by the Ministry of the Revolutionary Armed Forces that says the two planes collided during military exercises near the Penal del Rio base. Watch out for that Penal base, Henry. It's coming right at you. Uh, Roger, Zero Foxtrot, Charlie. Mission complete. We're coming home. There's a feeling deep inside you. It's a feeling of pride. Yeah, go, go, you wonder go, why you join. In today's U.S. Army, we do more by 10 a.m. than most people do by, say, noonish. But just because the military budget's been cut and we've closed down a few key bases, that doesn't mean the armed forces aren't a great place to start. Range 2,000 yards! Want to learn about computers? We'll teach you all about computers. You'll learn how to box them up and return them to the manufacturer for a refund. Launch sequence complete. Want to be in on Star Wars? Well, we can't afford it anymore, but there's a blockbuster video on every remaining base, so you can watch the movie. Don't forget, be kind, rewind. Today's U.S. Army. It's not like the old days. It's the few, the proud, the even fewer. Be all that you can be in the Army brochure. The U.S. Armed Forces. At this point, we're only looking for about six or seven good men. And maybe not even good ones. And a few women. Let's do a homestead. Hello. I nail. I'm in Homestead, and I have no penis. Really? Well, listen, you probably got a lot of company down there. Miami Lakes, hello. How you doing, Neil? Pretty good. All right, listen, I was uh, I was calling for two reasons. Okay, let's uh, uh, see if we can't okay. nail them down. Okay, well, no, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's clean, but, you know, the most prominent being that I'm really sick and tired of the old stereotypes tagged on to gay men. Mm -hmm. this, well, this morning, I work in a warehouse, and yeah. this morning I was asked to fix a hand cart. And uh, I don't know if, if they did it mm -hmm. as a joke or just out of curiosity, but they were actually amazed when I not only fixed it, but I did it in two minutes. Yeah. You did it in two minutes? How about the hand cart? The hand cart took a little longer. Okay. 
I, I guess they expected me to like break a nail and go into a flaming tantrum like that. Oh, yeah. damn that, Sally Hansen. You know, right. You know, uh, like you people find smear, out you're gay and smear you know. your makeup. Oh, listen, uh, the, the it's it's just so pathetic and so tragic. And of course, the reason that that goes on, I mean, like all these people that go to see professional wrestling with all these big macho, uh, well-built, uh, you know, uh, crazy. Most of those guys are uh, deep in the closet. Who the hell are they kidding? <laughs> they are. I Not know. to mention so many of the football players and baseball players and hockey players, God forbid, and all these others. That that's the reason that all these ugly stereotypes exist. Because the only people who are obvious that those are the only ones they're exposed to are the ones who are. And every time you turn on Donahue or one of those shows, they've got some flaming drag queen on there. Right. Oh man, there was there was some show on yesterday on W O R. They were standing outside some kind of a uh, place in New York. York where the, all these people show up and they don't know who the entertainment is going to be. I can't think of which show it was. Maybe I saw it on the satellite. And they had the, the door guy was a bald. He looked like one of these real clony. And he talked like, I mean, just the most incredible stereotype. And I wanted to crawl under my sofa and never come out again. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, what they expect. I know. It's really, you know, people find out you're gay and like you're right away. You're supposed to like in, show tunes and Betty Davis. In America, but that's in this country. <laughs> No, seriously, no, that's there, in this there's country. One, there's one more reason I called. This goes out to Bobo. Butch up, kid. Yes, you know, sir. I love you, but butch up. Okay, yeah. well, listen, he and Johnny you know, are going to be busy the over show the show weekend. Too. Okay, see ya. What is it, Henry? Henry got some more heavy-duty stuff. Maybe it's going to be more about that penile base. That's where Henry's going to be hanging around over the weekend. It says the State Department is flatly denying a claim that Secretary of State James Baker used an obscenity in discussing Israel... I have a message for Secretary of State Baker, okay? Cox a hoist, baby, okay? Former New York City Mayor Ed Koch makes the claim today in the New York Post. He says he was told by someone who was there that the incident happened at a recent high-level White House meeting. According to Koch, Baker was criticized for taking a hardline attitude toward Israel. Koch claims Baker answered with a crude obscenity about the Jewish state and its supporters in the United States. As I flick my thing around here desperately to find the appropriate cart that I'm going to need. Uh, the alleged comment was, F them, they didn't vote for us. F them, they didn't vote for us. And I don't mean Ephraim Zimbalist. At the State Department, spokeswoman Margaret Tutwiler says, quote, The article is false. It is outrageous. It's garbage. It's a pile of... Okay. So uh, you figure out for yourself, okay, who the real anti-Semites are. I wonder if Jim Baker's having lunch with uh, Pat Buchanan today. Hi, this is Larry King, and they don't come any better than Neil Rogers. When Tom Schlamiel tries to put me down and says he has a larger congregation, I tell him right away, now listen here, to Nick ain't you heard of my show? It's number one in the nation. All is paid, give him dollars, for the So 
the mayor quad says that Secretary of State James Baker used an obscenity in discussing Israel. And according to Quad, Baker says um, they didn't vote for us anyway. F him, he said. How do you like that? F you, James. A couple of other letters that go after that, as a matter of fact. You're listening to the best of Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Neil's on vacation this week, but you're still listening to the Neil Rogers Show through the magic of audio tape. It's the best of Neil on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Legend says that Nostradamus could see the future. <laughs> Of the moon of Jupiter, the new world shall suffer a great quake. Nostradamus, he could tell the future. Horrible death, terrible destruction will befall the air. Now you can put that extraordinary insight to work for you. Introducing Nostra System. The first diet plan based entirely on the predictions of Nostradamus. A woman named Sophie will consume a huge cake of chocolate, causing her moon to grow large and her thighs to thunder. Finally, no more guesswork as Nostra System predicts the real shape of things to come. Hey. Named Lenny will lose so much water, he creates a killer tidal wave in the Midwestern plains. Don't wait to find out your weight. Enroll today in the diet plan of the future. Nostra Systems. I predict you will waste great sums of money on a worthless scam. <gasps> He has seen the future. You know what I like the best on the Ranieri show now? That new feature where he does his little trance in his pants and he tells you about who won the uh, the lottery thing. Haven't you heard that where he goes in that little uh, fake trance? It would be like my uh, um, going into a trance and like reading to you the uh, headline from the Metro Extra section in yesterday, in Tuesday's Sun Sentinel. Okay, I'll say, uh, water supply surge in February. Rain may force state district measures to avoid flooding in Lake Okeechobee, I think it's going to say, in the upper right-hand corner of page 3B. And then Henry comes in and says, look at that, water supply surge in February. Rain may force state, how about that? Yeah, good job, man. And that goes about 30 seconds in between those spots. I noticed George is eating something in there. What is it, just those kreplach? Shrimp fly lice. Shrimp fly lice? Oh, God. Well, at least he's not eating raw fish. How, you know... I shouldn't talk about this at lunchtime, especially before I'm about to dig into my luscious some young guy. But how do people eat sushi? Oh, it's just, have you ever seen it? Just to see it. I mean, I don't like fish to begin with even cooked. I don't even want to see it. And when you go in the market and the fish's eye is like looking at you out of the corner like a douchebag, that kind of thing. But sushi, oh, man, God. I just can't believe there are so many people out there who like to eat it raw. North Miami. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Pretty good. Hey, listen, um, when you were on Zeta, you used to play a cart with the yes. guy saying he was miserable and um, he was going to go and buy life to get high on. You still got that? He was going to what? He was going to buy life. He was going to go in the store and buy life, and it would make his life better. He was going to get high on life. No, I don't remember that. Yeah, you used to play it on Zeta. The guy no. was going, I'm miserable. I got fired from a job, and I'm miserable. You don't mean you depress me. <laughs> huh? What's that? You depress me, That's but that's a different one. That was one that Bill Calder used to play. About oh. That. That's not it, though. Oh, and anyway, yeah. about those French license plates. Yes, sir? The real meaning. Remember you were talking about mass murders yesterday? Oui, oui. Okay, that's why they have it on there. There was uh, a guy that went crazy. No, get out no, of it, here. It was, Come it was on. Even on hard, it was even We've on, had like 600 different meanings for what the hell it is. No, it was, that it means I remember top. the mass murderer? Yeah, the guy went into a college in Let's Montreal. have a Ted Bundy plate in Florida. How do you like that? He went, he went I remember a, Ted. He went into a, a, a French college in Montreal. Get out of he town. Killed, he killed 15 women. He shot 18 of them. Yeah. And he did it because he was an anti-feminist and he hated women. Yeah. And uh, after that happened, they put that on the license plates because they said that was... No, the worst. get out of here. No, it really is. And they said that was the worst mass murder in, Ameri in, in Canada, and they only expect that kind of stuff to happen down here. Oh, I see. And they put it on the plates so it's so like, they, they like, remember. Yeah. And that's the whole thing. Well, we should have one that says better to you than us. Yeah, definitely. Okay. We'll send them up there. Have a great day. You too. Thanks.
If anybody believes that, we got a bridge tender up the street who's got a thing. And by the way, I made the bridge yesterday, was up on the way home, and coming to work this morning, two for two. Whoever she is up there, uh, tend to that bridge, man. Tend this, bitch. That's all I can say to you. She's just brutal. <laughs> All you frogs out there, I have a little surprise message for you, okay? The only reason that you're here, that we allow you in, is because you see the thing in the paper this morning, Florida tourism is down 4% for the first time in years. They're admitting that it's down. And that's the only reason we're even allowing you to cross the border at Jacksonville is because the economy is desperate. And even with the miserable, putrid, worth almost nothing money with the pictures of the queen burned out with your cigarette ashes, we're even willing to take that and all the crap you heap upon us because we're desperate and we've chased everybody else away. There's the honest, bald truth, man, for your big, fat, ugly bodies, okay? So pick up your toe jam and head home. Miami Lakes. Hello, Neil. Uh -huh. They ran all the spring breakers out, but they let the frogs in. Uh-huh. I don't believe that, man. Well, trust me. Hey, that thing on the license doesn't mean what that guy said. Of course it doesn't, but it's a good story, though. That happened though. last year. That happened last year? Yeah, but, and that Just think, if it keeps happening enough years, there won't be any more French Canadians to come down here and bug the crap out of yeah, us. Yeah, but they didn't tell Something to think about. It happened at a university. Oh. Oh, there were the young people. Well, yeah. they don't want no young people up there. One guy, he went to a class. That's why they fit in so well down here, because they don't want no young people up there, and they sure as hell don't want any here. They suck. Mm-hmm. Hey, Neil, every time you play one of them Alex Bennett cards, yes. all I can visualize in my head is him kicking Rick in the mouth Yeah. and a, a cheesecake. I agree. Yeah. I mean, the whole time he was down here, all he talked about was getting trying That's to get late. That's all he talked about is about how horny he was. He needed cheesecake. And I, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, there was that call yesterday, and I don't usually get into this because it's not even worth defending because it's stupid. Yeah. But all of the stuff that I do that stick on the air, and I talk about uh, this one on the TV and Orlando and all this other, he used to sit here and talk and uh, oogle over that dance party show and get hysterical about 12 and 13 and 14-year-old girls on His here. Girlfriend was like 19, he used to say. Yeah, he was into young chicks, which there's no problem with that as long as they were legal and they all were. But, I mean, I don't recall anybody ever calling and saying, oh, well, he's a child molester and he's into young girls. You know, it's a bunch of hypocritical crap. And his show, who was all his guests? Bunch of naked chicks every day? Right, exactly right. Studio audience? And that studio audience was the cast from Porky's, man. All those really horny, desperate guys who couldn't make it with Bossy the Cow. Yeah. If I had the ability to do it, I'd take you out here right now and kick your goddamn teeth in. Yeah, ability is the operative word, Alex. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. He needs to get a vasectomy. Who? He needs to get a vasectomy. I think he already had, On starting at the neck. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I got a little request. You can see the bad slice job. Okay. That Stan Major cart? Which what one? the hell do you want? Oh, haven't heard that in a long yeah, damn time, have we? Yeah, love that cart. You love it? Yeah. How about the cart? That too. Okay. All right, Neil. Have a great life. Uh, um. Yes? Uh, wait a minute, I forgot how to say it. See ya. Uh, good. Stan Major, now on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. If you missed the last show, you missed this. Well, then what the hell is your problem? Kane is in New York, fella. When he would do a show, I don't want Kane back. I just told you that. But well, then who do you want? I think who do you want? You want Alan Burke? No, of course not. I think you want Joey Reynolds? No, of course not. Then what the hell do you want on the air? Is Silence? I mean, is that all we have to choose? What do you... From? Give me a name. But is that all we... Who have? do you want? Is that all we have what to choose? What kind of content 
do you want during two to six? Hear the next Stan Major show this afternoon at two on News Talk Radio six ten WIOD. Just tell me, just tell me what your problem is. If I had the ability to do, I'd take you out here right now and kick your goddamn teeth in. All right, there we covered all the bases there, man. This is News Talk Radio six ten WIOD with the best of Rogers. This is Neil Rogers. I'm on vacation this week, and you're not. Too bad. Now back to the best of Neil on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. It's the all-new Leave it to Beaver, starring Barbara Billingsley, Hugh Beaumont, Tony Dahl, and Clint Eastwood as the Beaver. Beaver! Uh, yeah, Mom, what is it? Hi, there's a package down here for you. just came in the mail. Uh, looks like it's from Bubbles. Isn't that that girl you know at school? No, she's a hooker. She's hooky. hooky. She plays hooky from school a lot. That's where I know her from. Later, up in the boys' room... Hey, Wally. Look, I got a package from Bubbles. Oh, yeah? Who did she send you? Let's see here. Oh, jeez. She sent me her underwear. <laughs> I gotta quit hanging around those kind of women. I suppose I could say I told you so, but uh, I guess this is no time to be rubbing it in. Well, as long as Mom and Dad don't find out, I'll just hide them in the drawer here. Later, that same episode. Ford, look what I found in Beaver's drawer. Hmm, where'd that come from? Uh-oh, I think I'm in trouble. Big trouble. Uh, Mom, Dad, those underwear belong to, uh, to Wally. Wally? What are you talking about? Yeah, they're his. He wears them. Presses around in them like, like Tinkerbell. Isn't that right? Big brother. Yeah. <laughs> A lady in Miami who's been waiting a very long time. That's okay. I'm very patient. Well, that's good. Well, I wanted to tell you, Neil, uh, I didn't even know that AM existed before a month ago, and I'm so glad to be turned on to your show. Well, her, who turned you on, so to speak? What's that? I say, how did you find us? Um, oh, just news reports here and there, but I had heard you were a very funny guy, and this is true. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. I really enjoy your show. So entertaining. I wanted to tell you uh, what's been happening to me with the police. Yes, ma'am. They pull me over just to say hello, and I don't think that's very cute. So in other words, they're uh, just trying to play with your body parts is what you're saying, huh? Uh, possibly so, and it's really scary because I'm just a short five-foot woman, and I don't know what they want, and it's very scary. Yeah. Thank you. I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, well, what do you I mean wanted... just to say hello? What do they say when they pull you over? They say, oh, I just wanted to s stop you and say hello. And I said, what for? Well, what I'm... kind of crap is that? Exactly. Exactly. I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. They're wasting my time. And every time I get pulled over, my knees go weak. I get scared. I think, oh, boy, there goes all my bucks flying out the window. Did you see that story yesterday about the cop in Davy who did all those uh, series of 80 jillion robberies, and he's on the loose, and he jumped the bond, and he's uh, they don't know where he is, and he's dangerous and armed and a douchebag? Oh, great. Every day we have another uh, one or two or five or a hundred of those stories. Oh, great. And not to mention, of course, the story about the uh, blackout in Los Angeles where the trial is going on now that they beat the crap out mm -hmm. of 50 times. Times. Oh, yeah. And the question is, I love the way they presented it on CBS Evening News last night. Is this uh, police brutality or legitimate law enforcement? I mean, what are they talking about? And you just watch and they're just beating and with the club sticks and they got these wires attached and they're just pounding a daily and crap out of this guy. I think legitimate law enforcement is a contradiction in terms. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, could I call somebody a douchebag on the radio, really? Of course. Oh, boy. Javier Garcia, <laughs> you're really... Well, wait a minute.
Miami on the star line. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Pretty good. Hey, I appreciate some of your the pig reports. Yes. Uh, I've got some real serious thoughts about the FHP <laughs> and what they do. Mm-hmm. But I'm in law enforcement, and I've got some problems with some of the attitudes about law enforcement in general. Why is that? Well, the same attitude that you have, that all pigs are... every. No, I, ha- no I have never, ever said that, okay? Ever. You haven't? No. I that's a... never have said that. And I'm not going to do a disclaimer. That reminds me of the thing with Canadians. It's like I, I like I have to do a disclaimer or old people. Whatever I talk about, people who listen and listen even casually, not really carefully, know exactly what I'm talking about. We have Sergeant Harris, who's a great cop. We have Sergeant Jack, who comes in here all the time. we got a lot of friends, plantation police, 95% of my rave about what great people they are. They came to my house that day, and they cleared the media out of there, that circus out of my street. So don't accuse me. Uh, don't put words okay, in my well, mouth, because I've never said that. All right. oh, I but what, fra- that. But what pisses that the part. public off is this incessant harassment. We're paying you people to protect us and to enforce the laws that are meaningful. There are millions of laws out there on the books, most of which should have been repealed a hundred years ago. Oh, but, I agree. I agree. But it's a bunch of crap, this selective enforcement of things that are just there to harass the hell out of the public and play Big Brother and his fascist right-wing garbage. It's got to stop. I, no, I agree with that. There's a lot of selective enforcement, no doubt. But uh, a lot of people have... And it's only, be, and it's, and it's only because, and, and the thing with Rodney King in Los Angeles, when people see that night after night on television on the CBS Evening News, and they see a, a bunch of cops, a half a dozen of them, beating up this one tied-up guy and beating him with their nightsticks and kicking the crap out of him, what do you think that does to, to people's attitudes about police work? Well, it's the same toward my attitude. I was, there was absolutely no excuse for that. There, and that, that, ki- that kind of crap happens in this country every day, the only difference is most of the time somebody isn't hiding in a, a lurch with a video camera. True. Yeah. True. So I don't understand what the problem is. But a lot of law enforcement, the law enforcement in general, takes a lot of views from a lot of people. Yeah. Because there are there are some bad ones, obviously. No, FBI, there are a lot of there has. are a lot of bad ones, like the cop who, uh, in Davy who uh, busted out with all the robberies they were talking about on the news hour after hour yesterday. It goes on every day in the Miami River cops and just all over the place. And unfortunately, as long as this kind of stuff goes on and the kind of dregs that are brought into police work. As long as uh, everybody keeps quiet and we've got 85 million different police organizations all uh, telling everybody to shut up and protect each other like it's a big fraternity, then nothing's ever going to change. It's just like the medical profession with the doctors who don't want to open their mouth about all the butchers out there who are killing people every day, and that's why people become more and more skeptical and more cynical about doctors or whatever the profession is, because everybody wants to cover it up, and uh, we're all just a wonderful bunch of guys. Yeah. I said the bad ones should be... Well, you know, when, in doubt, we, when in doubt, weed them out. That's what I say. Definitely. And when in doubt, get out these people, these bigots, these assholes who want to pick on young people or gay people or black people or whoever it is. Get them the hell out of there. That's not law enforcement. That's just harassment. I agree with that part. Okay. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too. Oh, he said you too. Jeez. When are they going to... Uh, when is that thing going to be over with? When are they coming here? Is it over? It's over, yeah. Oh, they were here already? Oh, thank God. Pompano Beach. Hello. Yes. Neil. Yeah. yeah. No, this is the culmination of listening to your program for um, 10 years. What is that? <clears throat> well, I've been listening to your program. I'm from Toronto. Eh? I come from Toronto. Yes. Spend the winters down here. Yes. On and off. A couple of things I wanted to bring up. One, your lunch yesterday was not Kishki. It was Kishka. Oh, we've already discussed that. Shmata, Shmati, Kishka, Kishki. You say tomato, I say tomato. It all depends on which side of the tracks you're from. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I said, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, don't you got a lot of background music there? Well, that's because you sound like Marlon Brando in The Godfather, and I figured that you got that voice. <laughs> you got that cotton in your cheeks. And anyway, some in your mouth, too. Anyway, what I was going to say was another thing. Yes. Being from Toronto. Hey. Eh? Being from Toronto, yeah, I agree with you about all those French Canadians. Oi. 
But please. Yes. Don't put us in the same tent. I don't. I don't. Why do I have to? You're just like the cop that called before. I have to do all these disclaimers. No, no, I love sir. my Ontario Canadians, especially if they have a blue and white uniform on. What is it? I said, any time you want to come to Toronto, hey? watch the Maple Leafs. Right. I'll give you the two best seats in the house. Have you got uh, tickets? I've had tickets since 1944. Oh, my God. I bet you used to hang out with Foster Hewitt, too. No, but uh, I used to hang out with... Uh, Harold Ballard. No, the one that... Harold uh, Ballard used to go blim, 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 all the time. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, geez, on the That's why we've been tongue. in last place for 20 years, because Harold Ballard was going blim, 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 like that. I used to go up in the booth and what and uh, in the end blues. No, in the booth, the broadcast. Oh, in the booth, in the garden with Bill Hewitt. Not Bill Hewitt. Foster no. Hewitt. No, no, not the it, broadcasting, the local announcement booth. Oh, oh, Red oh, Barber. That, Red Barber. Oh, who? Red Barber. Red Barber. What has he got to do with the Maple Leafs? Red Barber used to do the announcing up in the booth. No. Yes. Red Barber. Yep. Used to do Not what the same that? one you're thinking of. Oh, I see. This what? is the Canadian. Well, let me ask you a question. The guy who does the public address on the Leafs games is the same guy. I've been a Leaf fan for 34 years, 1958, and it's the same guy with that real annoying, whiny voice who's been doing the public address for 34 years. Is that Red Barber? No, he's gone now. Red well, what, gone. what is this guy's name? I don't even know. You don't know? You know the voice, though, I'm talking about. Yeah. Maple Leaf Goal, scarred by number 27, Frank Mahovlich. This is Jerry Eamon and Billy Harris. Fine. That real uh, just grating voice. Yeah, it sounds like Billy. Uh, it sounds like Bill Hewitt with a clothespin. What? Yes. And I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Because I'm going back on what my memory of listening to. Okay, WIP. real fast. I'm all almost out of time. Go ahead. Did Quick. you do the uh, Ku Klux Klan interview? The what? With the head of the Ku Klux Klan from in, in Florida. Here, did you do that interview? No, I sure hope not. Who I, did it on your station? I leave my sheets at home. Probably a Nick Lawrence or somebody like that, or Steve Lawrence. Listen, have a great day, and we'll see you at the gardens, okay? You got it. Okay. It's the best of Rogers, and this is News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. These things go on and on and on and on, and until the day when somebody has the balls to go into court and get a ruling from a judge that says, hey, this is not legitimate police work, this is entrapment, they keep doing it. And the kind of crap that's going on, of course, the beach is only one of many thousands of places all across the country where this so-called kind of great police work goes on. And the attempt to continue closing down topless bars and bookstores and movie theaters. I mean, it's just the same kind of fascist crap that's been going on for years. But the last two or three years on the beach, it's just been totally out of control. I got one letter this morning from somebody who says he's a former listener because he's not going to listen anymore because I copped a plea and therefore I'm full of BS and blah, blah, blah. That's fine, Paolo. I'm sure you're listening right now. Let me just say this to you. In my particular case, there is no plea. Copping a plea means there has to be a plea. Uh, no contest, guilty, not guilty, something, okay? There isn't any plea in this. I made it very clear what the agreement is. And one of the parts of the agreement was exactly what's happening right now, that I would be able to come on the air or in interviews and talk about what happened. Not that I would just sweep it under the carpet and just pretend it never happened. Because this kind of crap has got to stop. So that's the story. That's exactly what happened. And that's one of the things that's frustrating in our system is that they can come along. And, of course, there's always two or more of them and one of you. They always make sure of that. And they can make up any goddamn story you want. And then once you're arrested, your lawyer always says, oh, you can't talk about it. So the newspapers are smeared with all these headlines, so and so. Oh, and there's another interesting thing I found out about over the weekend, too, by the way, talking about people being accused and people being smeared. You know this international pedophile ring that we keep reading about in a certain Broward County newspaper? Well, comes to find out that these charges, alleged charges, are 7 to 10 years old. Seven to ten years old, these incidents allegedly happened. Also comes to find out that the third name that we keep waiting to hear about, I heard this name for the second time from two unconnected people over the weekend. This is a person who is not in radio, to the best of my knowledge has never been in radio, and whose name I heard maybe about 15 years ago during the Anita Bryant days. So you put all of this together, and you really have to wonder what it is that some people are trying to prove. You know what I mean, Buddy Nevins? The Best of Rogers continues in minutes on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD.
Okay, so you tuned in to hear the live Neil Rogers show and you get a bunch of old tape programs. Isn't this a good reason to get a life? Now back to the best of Neil on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes? Are those Fugle Boy jeans down around your ankles? Why, yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Bugle Boy Jeans, available at fine stores everywhere. One other thing I want to mention, People Magazine, is that a joke or what? The thing they do every year with the sexiest man in the world? Did you see who got it? Nick Nolte. The sexiest man alive today, according to People Magazine. Get them some help, okay? Delray Beach. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. I'll tell you. Yeah. I got my arm and my passport right now, and I'm squeezing it. Are you? Yeah. Don't get uh, caught. I, I, I can't believe that. Can't believe what? Well, they, 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 they're setting up people like uh, by simulating they're having sex and then having uh, somebody else come in. Yeah. That's unbelievable. In English and Spanish, too, by the way, they don't discriminate. Several of the cases were, like, uh, done in Espanol. <laughs> okay. Okay? That's all I have to say. Okay. Bye. Have a great life. Well, he's got his little thing there. He's playing his own little, that's what we like. Here's a lady in Fort Lauderdale. Hi, good morning, Neil. Yes, ma'am. I heard you mention that if we close the show Saturday, what is it? You? What is it? I you said earlier that you wanted someone who heard the show on on Saturday night. Yes, I did. What is that show called? Night Rhythm. It's <laughs> uh, it's a good how show. How long have you been talking like this? That's how I talk. No, it's not. It is. It is not. I thought Anna Maria was wonderful on that show. This is Anna Maria calling from next door, I bet. <laughs> this is not. Hi, Anna Maria. Anyway, Anna Maria and Dick was great on the who? show. They have some local Anna Maria people. and Dick? Yes, that guy who does the hair commercial. No, that's uh, Mitch Lewis, not right. Dick Lewis. Okay, they had a wonderful show. They had some people on. That's another Dick you're thinking of. Talking about, um, you know, how to get started in the business. Yeah. It was very How to get started in what business? In the music business. In the music? Well, what does either one of them know about getting started in the music business? Well, they had experts on who told Oh, I see Anna Maria Tomahawk just came storming over here from the coast now to prove that it was. I saw you in your car this morning, by the way, coming to work, and you take the wrong way. You take the long way, Anna Maria. You're supposed to come down Miami Avenue to 87th and then go over to Biscayne. You go across. You take. You, I must have got here. T you're wrong. Take the wrong way. That's okay. Stay out of my way, Anna Maria. Go ahead. But it was a wonderful show. Well, I'm glad you said so. Job. And leave it to somebody who speaks like this to say so. <laughs> Have a great day. You too, Neil. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Kendall, hello. Oh, Neil. Yeah. I got a pig setup story for you. Okay. Okay, about a year ago, I was at the Sunrise Musical Theater going to a concert. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going mm -hmm. off to the bushes to relieve myself hmm. for the concert. You're relieving yourself in the bushes? Well, you know, the guy in the bathroom always wants a tip there at the Sunrise Theater. <laughs> so He always wants a big tip, and you couldn't uh, provide him with that, I guess exactly. is what you're trying to say. Okay. So there's two cars parked out there. One of them has a couple, you know, a male and a female. Mm -hmm. And they're going at it, you know, tonguing each other and the whole works and everything. Yeah. Other car is a bunch of kids, and they're starting to smoke something funny. Right? Huh. So I'm walking out of the bushes going toward the concert. All of a sudden, the couple pops out of the car and pounces on these kids and starts searching them. Guess what? They're police. Plain clothes, decoy. But Look they, out. They were not just simulating it. Because I walked right by and saw it, and I was kind of shocked, you know. There was no way. Yeah. They were going at it. They were mm -hmm. police. Well, hey, listen. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of on the boulevard when they used to have these... Um, uh, plain clothes cops and they would uh, bust these prostitutes and they would get them in a car and a hooker would offer like oral sex for 20 bucks and the cop would never arrest them until after the act was completed of course <laughs> so you know that they were just going through the motions because they were doing their work right sure for their own enjoyment yes sir okay i gotta go my bagels are burning okay dania hi dale how you doing uh great i got a wild little story that you'll probably really dig uh back in january of 91 me and three friends, we went to uh, Sheridan uh, Seven Movie Theater. Uh -huh. And my girlfriend, when we got out of the car, my girlfriend uh, lost one of her earrings near the car. So we're down on the, you know, we're looking around the car. You're down on the ground, huh? Yeah. With your girlfriend, okay. Uh, so we're uh, looking for this earring. About After about 10 minutes, she finds it. 
she says, I found it. And so we got up, and just as I was, just as we were getting up, to my left side, a guy comes running up to me. Yeah. Exactly. He comes running up to me, doesn't say anything, puts his hand in the nape of my neck and my shoulder from the side and squeezes really hard and says, hey, pal. And as soon as he does that, I turn around. I didn't know what, I thought maybe he was going to try to rob us or whatever because he was dressed regular, had jeans on and a windbreaker. Mm-hmm. I turn around, spun with a backhand, broke his nose, put his lip open, and he fell back on the ground. And then I was going to, you know, jump on him again, but he oh! into his pocket, and then he started <laughs> flashing a badge. Yeah. So I said, oh, wow. I'm in why, didn't he, why didn't he do that first? That, just like, well, these, just like exactly the two in my, in my incident, how come they didn't come out and very calmly and quietly... Flashed it. Well, of course, I mean, my story is so ridiculous anyway, because if any of the allegations were true, they would have done that inside and said, come with us and gone out in the lobby. Because I've seen them do it. I've seen them bust people in theaters. And they, they don't wait for you to walk outside and across the street and halfway down to your car and yeah. then come running out like an axe murderer. That's just not how it's done. Well, that's what happened. See, I got taken to jail. And I, I was really worried about it. And when I contacted my lawyer, the first thing my lawyer said was, he a plain clothes? And I said, yes. And he said that he identified himself as a police officer. I said, no. I said, he, the only words that came out of his mouth, I mean, he might have been trying to, but the only words that came out of his mouth was, hey, pal. And as soon as he grabbed me in the corner of my neck, I just spun around. See, this, this, let me tell you something. This whole concept of plain clothes officers and unmarked cars for these piddly little non-criminal things and for... Stop and think about what that's like, okay? I can understand plain clothes if there's like a something, uh, some major sinister thing that they're like infiltrating or something of that nature. But other than that, it's like Big Brother is like sitting next to you and standing behind you and tapping you on his shoulder. This is a bunch of crap. It's terrorism. What, what, so what happened was they tried to, there was a couple other police cars around. They came up in a, within about five minutes oh, after yeah. he, and he's bleeding, gushing, so the paramedics came. They took him away. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I went to jail. Uh, went to jail for what? For assault on a police officer. That was the charge. Well, how the hell were you supposed to know it was a police exactly. officer? How, how did you know it wasn't some kind of a moron, a exactly. thug, I didn't. a goofball? I didn't. And what the police tried to do was they tried to get some people that were in the, uh, in the parking lot around there. They, they rounded some people up to come into court and tell their story. Uh, to, to, figure tell, it to tell what help, story? Probably help their case out to find, you know, to, as a witness that I beat the crap out of this cop. Yeah. When, they, when we got into the courts, they uh, testified that they thought that I was actually being robbed also and being accosted. And that Great. nobody knew that he was a cop until he was on the ground and, and waving his badge out. Right. So the, it, the charges were uh, thrown out this Smith. Outstanding. I just want to let you know that if anybody out, out there, if hello, it's anybody a hello comes up to you and tries to beat the crap out of you or grab you or whatever and doesn't identify himself, you got the right to beat the living crap out of them until they bleed from the ears. You bet. Talk to you later. Okay, good luck. How about that, huh? In other words, beat the crap out of them first and ask questions later. You're listening to the best of Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Neil's on vacation this week. So while he's away, we're broadcasting the best of Neil. Highlights of previously broadcast programs. Now, back to Neil on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. For the next 60 seconds, this station will conduct a test of the emotional broadcast system. This is only a test. Uh, I can't take it anymore. I hate my job. I hate my life. Nobody likes me. I'm so depressed. I can't stand it. Get out of my way. Leave me alone. This has been a test of the emotional broadcast system. In the event of an actual breakdown, you'd have been given mega vitamin therapy, weeks of counseling, and a new car! Yes, the brand new Electrode 225 Lithium Edition. And now, back to our show! Talking, Jordan was talking during the break about people wasting time because they have no lives. This is a classic example. I get a postcard today from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, okay? Buffy. Buffy says, I spent last month in your area and listened to you each day. You gave me some chuckles, but mostly culture shock underlined. You have the opportunity to better our world. Why don't you? Asks Buffy. Is that incredible? She takes the time to go home to Myrtle, South Carolina, to Myrtle Beach. And this beach takes the time to send me a postcard like I'm supposed to be here, bettering our world. Well, I'll tell you one thing, uh, Buffy, Beffy, whatever the hell your name is, bitch. 
You sure as hell bettered our town by getting out of here and going back to where the hell you came from, okay? Isn't that incredible? She was down here visiting, and she's writing me a postcard telling me what I should be doing with my time on the air. What a sleazebag. Salespeople are ice holes. I'm telling you, man, something has got to be done about this WIOD sales department since they canned little Laura's ass. This continuity situation is out of control. It's gone nuts. We're sitting here, and we don't know what the hell we're talking about. Oh, copy? What's that? You want some information to go on here and open up your big fat mouth? Oh, just go on here and make it up. Just go on here and spew a bunch of crap. We don't care. We got their money. I think that somebody ought to go back there and take Jeff Clark and Rick Alpo and put the two of them like in a uh, in our freezer for a little while, like for about 20 hours, and then thaw it out and see if there's anything left. An out-of-control situation. If that sales department spent half the time getting copy information and doing their job right and servicing their clients, as Kathy would say, if they spent half the time doing that as they arrange sticking meals in here that we don't want and can't eat, we'd have an operation going here, man. We'd be kicking some butt. But we're not. <sighs> Take a deep breath. I mean, just constantly arguing and arguing between Paris and Denenberg. And they think it's like a big joke. They think this is like a game here. How can they be selling anything when they're standing in here from 9.30 to... And, of course, neither one of them can ever do any wrong. And then Cheryl Gritzer back there, she sends Halcyon in here with a thing about some appearance that I never heard of before. Never anybody spoke to me about it. Oh, sure, here, just sign on the uh, dotted line. But you people out there don't care about these things because you have your own problems, right? Two calls left now. Let's just take, let's take these last two, okay? Don't put anybody, George, don't put anybody else on hold, huh? Let's just take the last two and then we'll play like a lot of stuff while my sugar comes down under 400. Here's uh, Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Okay, that's not one. So we're down to our very last call, Boca on the Star Line, who says... Hey, Neil. Yeah. Listen, I got a good look at that Elaine Ettor's picture yesterday. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like that syndrome. You remember when Stan used to have Arlene Ross on? Oh, God. And everybody used to think she was, like, really hot, Hot you know? babe, yeah. I always told you, voices are the kiss of death, man. And then I got to look at her one day. And it's I'm like guys that call those 900 numbers, and they hear this real erotic voice on the other end of the line. And if they could see it, it would be like Roseanne Barr in heat on a bad day with a heat rash. Unbelievable. Well, yes, sir. Well, tell me something. Is she or is she not Ron Jeremy's sister? That's what she looked like in the picture. Yeah. The female version. Only her hair curlers know for sure. <laughs> well, have a great day. And back to you. Okay, there's our last call of the week. This portion of our show brought to you by the American Obstetrics Association. People pulling people out of people. Hello. Hi, is this Neil? Yes. Oh, this, uh, I'm a first-time caller. Great. And I'm in Davie. And uh, I've just been hearing you saying that uh, no one's calling, no one's that calling. That is correct. That's right. We just all of a sudden at the end of the road. After 16 and a half not-so-glorious years, we just ran out of callers, ma'am. <laughs> you sound so different from the telephone. Well, that's right. I am different on the phone. Well... I saw uh, my cousin Vinny. Have you seen it? No. Well, I. I with I, Joe, with Joe Pesky. Yeah. No, he I haven't was, seen uh, it. I got a headache, man. Oh, God, am I sick? Go ahead. Well, anyway, it was pretty good. There was a couple really funny parts in it, and um, but I liked it. And I heard you once before talking about Joe. Pesky. Not that kind of a headache. It's a blood sugar headache, George. Don't go away with aspirin. Yes. Well, I heard you once talking about Joe Pesci about how. It's all F this, F that, F this, F that. Right. He's the same in this movie, but... Yeah. Well, he specializes in that. He's the F man. It, it was funny, though. There was a couple really funny <clears throat> parts in it. But the movie, when we went, there were people sitting right behind us that this this man was laughing at just the things that were not funny, and he would just crack up really, really loud. Probably Joe's brother. Well, he was... It, <clears throat> is Joe black or white? What? Is Joe a colored man? Well, what difference does that make? Why do we have to bring that into it? We don't. Well, let's not. Okay. Why do we have to make everything into it? Some guy sitting in a movie theater, why do I have to make that into a racial thing? A click. There she goes. How do you like that? What a bitch. What a disgusting bitch. That must have been Mrs. David Douche. Oh, God. 
Let me just play something in honor of the way I feel. I, this is like an extension picking up right where we left off last week because nobody does anything about it in this place. Salespeople are assholes. Salespeople are ice holes. Well, I'll take your pick. I mean, it's like they're in, in, in heat, and nobody's going to stop them. And, boy, Gary, it's like a big joke. Well, you let me know if they're in there. Just get their ass out of here. Why isn't somebody back there running that goddamn sales department? Isn't that Jeff Clark and Rick Alpo? I mean, at this place, we don't have one manager. We've got to have two because we're just loaded. We're, ha we're just top-heavy with bureaucrats in this place. Everybody's got a goddamn title. Even Nora Burdo, dumb burdo has got a title. He's like the... Uh, the, the uh, Maven uh, picker up or something, whatever the hell he is. A hot shot. Couldn't get arrested in a panty raid in front of Disney's house. Uh, WYOD, wherever you are. Date, is it? I want to peel the skin off your forehead. Uh, WYOD. Neil. WYOD in Broward. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Getting a lot of good calls now. Pretty good. That's great. Hey, did they I think we ought to get your... those last two together. Yes? Did they impound your car when uh, you got busted on the... No, beach? they did not. Oh. What... Why would they do that? It was sitting over there in a uh, pubic lot. Well, even even so, they usually impound them for whatever reason. If they just want to no. you know, hassle you a little more than... Uh... How, can, how can they do that if it's just parked legally somewhere? They can't impound your car. Well, they can only do that if they arrest you in your car. Well, they, they're they not allowed to do a lot of things that they get away with anyway. So, yeah. I, you know, I figured... Uh, they may not have impounded my car, but I guarantee you they would have impounded the crap out of me if I would have run when they came out of there. Yeah, I, exa exactly. So what do you do, like, when these people are in undercover cars and they're following you? You know, and how do you know to pull over? And then if you, you don't, don't pull over... You don't. That, see, that that's what I say. This whole crap about undercover cars and undercover uh, out-of-uniform pigs, that this should not be permitted whatsoever. I mean, how many scams have we have had where people have been posing... As, as undercover, undercover cops, cops, and they come and they rip people off and uh, rape the women and kill and all this other crap. This is a bunch of garbage, okay? At least give us an opportunity of seeing who the hell is uh, who. It's happened in both, you know, in both ways. If people right. undercover, uh, suppose that undercover cops come to your door, right. you know, and tell you, well, we're here to search. And then yeah. you got people trying to pull you over, and then they rip off your car.